just if you take a step back to like a public health, you just talk about data, you know, and the increasing amount of data that are available uh, to everybody in the world, in all industries. Um, I mean, there's uh, big data. I don't know if you've heard that terminology, but I mean, it's just, it's, it's amazing the growth in data capture, data availability. Particularly local data, more than any other data, tells an astounding story. It tells a story that a politician hears because it's about their own constituent. Mm. It tells a story that a business person hears because it's about their community where they're working. It tells a story that non-governmental and community service organizations um, care about, and I think that communities can see themselves. I don't think that most people relate to what's going on either at the national and provincial level. It's sort of like reporting, well, you know, today, uh, the average temperature in Canada is, I don't know, 10 degrees Celsius. Well, people just don't relate to that. But if you get down more to the, uh, even at the provincial level, if you go more down to the community level, you like it's better to have a weather report for the anti Ganesh area than it is for all of Nova Scotia, you know, and Environment Canada recognizes that. I think it's the same thing with health reporting. I think maps are a great way to actually tell the story of what's happening in local communities in a way that people can connect to it. People understand their neighborhood. And when you talk to them about their neighborhood, they can tell you exactly what things are there. Um, they can, and they may not use social determinants of health as a language, but they can describe all of the things that matter in terms of health and well-being in that community. People have really sort of snapped to attention when they've seen that. All of a sudden, it's not just some theoretical piece of information in a research, dusty research report somewhere. It's actually right here in my own community. I know that community, and that's absolutely true when I think about yeah. it. And then what the beautiful thing about it for me is, um, they start to mobilize around it. Right. So, you know, if you, if you think about that, that age-old definition of public health as, as the organized efforts of society, right? Sometimes societies will self-organize. They just need a little push. Right. And I, there's something about the data for me that gives that little bit of a push if it's, if it's positioned appropriately. Right. That you see quite often is where people you know, they see something that they think is cool and try and figure out what to do with it as opposed to saying, okay, well, here's what I really want to do. I really want to disseminate information on health inequities in a way that will, you know, resonate with this population. Well, okay, that's your goal and that's what we want to do right now. Let's think about, you know, what's got to happen. What's the process here in terms of data access, devil looking indicators, and pushing that information out to those people um, in a way that makes sense. So what you really need, are, I think, are people out there who can talk to academics, you know, sort of quiet, quiet us down and saying, can you begin to tell the story? And then they, they can trace out the story which needs to be told. And then that can be, you know, take that out to the community. Because actually doing the background technical research academics are very good at and they like to do and if you leave them to do to go their own way they'll come up with very innovative things but then getting the message out to uh, the community uh, is uh, is a different uh, takes a different skill set so i think what you really need is a, a, a team approach indicators are just the beginning of the story and sometimes we forget that um, you can't expect to understand the why it's happening from an indicator you can just get the, this is happening, and it's really the beginning of the story, and then you need to, do, to fill in the backstory. People said to me the problem with a lot of indicators is that they mask the differences in populations, and that we are often looking at averages in the population and not really grasping that there's quite a bit of diversity within our population. And if we looked at that, it would start to lead us to ask, well, why is it so different? You know, Montreal Public Health Department, where I am, has been the leading edge in some ways of, of using data and using information effectively. One reason is because they have the resources. <laughs> They're one of the larger, probably, health departments, uh, I would say, in, in Canada, at the uh, sort of urban or, or, you know, the municipal level. Um, but it's also been a fair bit of vision from the leadership. But the issue there is, is to um, sort of look outside of public health and see what's happening in the world around and it's not just about hiring IT people. It's about having people who understand the technology, 
and understand the business of public health, if you will, and can see the the benefits and the appropriate strategies to um, organize and use that information effectively. I have um, a, a neat story that I use when I'm when I'm teaching as well, um, and it actually comes from my sister, who's a family physician here in Nova Scotia. And she called me one night um, to tell me a, a population health story that occurred in her clinical practice. And what she said to me was, "I get it because she had a patient who um, had cardiovascular risk factors all over the place, and she did what any one of us as a clinician would do. She responded with." Here is the list of things that I, as your physician, am recommending you do. You need to eat better, you need to exercise more, I'm worried about this, I'm worried about that. And this patient came back to her and said, okay, well, when you say eat better, what do you mean? Uh, and so my sister was able to say to her, well, you know, I want you to increase your fruit and vegetable intake, you know, Canada's Food Guide says five to ten servings a day, at least go for five. So this woman comes back to her with another question, well, when you say that, are canned fruits and vegetables okay? No, I'm worried about the sodium content of those. That would be bad for your blood pressure. I really want it to be fresh uh, fruits and vegetables. So as they went on questioning, finally this patient looked at her and said, so when you say these things, I, I, I can't buy that food at the dollar store. Exactly. And so the realization my sister had as a clinician was she was in the wrong conversation because now she's wondering why right. is this woman buying her food at the dollar store? Right. So that was the question she called me with. Yes. When we had the conversation, she went from maybe because she's not educated, oh well, maybe, but she's my patient and I know she's educated because we've had the conversation many times, to there are no grocery stores in her part right. of the city. Exactly. And then it became, so what's the intervention that gets a grocery store in that part of the city where people exactly. can buy affordable food, right? Exactly. That's the turning point for clinicians that I think that, you know, they, they can find those opportunities. Right.